Well, welcome back to lunch, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you had an enjoyable lunch, as I did. My name is Fen Wu. I'm the Managing Director of Neurolytics, a market research firm that's focused around holistic views of the IT industry. I am extraordinarily honored to be introducing such an esteemed, esteemed speaker next. Um, you know, we live in a high-tech world, and we all love to play with computers. And if you're anything like me, um, after I go home from work, and considering I work from home, it's not a very far walk to get from home, my work desk to where I play, I tend to play with computers even more. Our next speaker apparently has a passion for cars, he told me. Rally cars, no less. And then he found that when he went to grad school, it all went away. All he knew was how to deal with computers, computers, and more computers. In fact, he earned his uh, PhD in uh, electrical and computer engineering at uh, Cornell. Now he even teaches as an adjunct uh, position at Texas A&M, where he continues to collaborate with uh, other academic researchers on computers. Um, that said, he frequently uh, travels the world and then presents at major uh, industry conferences with other academics on computers. Uh, and, but prior to joining Huawei, he was also with IBM, where he was doing a lot of advanced R&D work and multi-site product development and global uh, customer engagements on computers. Um, but after he joined Huawei, he was the chief architect of Huawei's Fusion Insights big data platform. And currently, he's leading R&D efforts in data center technologies, working with global teams around the world. Dr. Lee is a research program director today and is the chief architect of big data and analytics at Huawei Technologies, based out of their Plano, Texas office. His, his presentation today is important because when we think about data centers, whether it's software-defined, whether they're cloud-based, whether they're in-house, somewhere else, managed by you, managed by anybody else. One of the key areas that we think about is convergence. One of the other C words we think about is collaboration. One of the other words is consolidation. With all of those things come another key component, which is performance. So how do we construct, how do we create, how do we architect a high performance environment using essentially low cost or common off-the-shelf parts? So I would like to introduce Dr. Lee from Huawei Technologies as he introduces us to the idea of high throughput computing data center architectures. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Lee. Hey guys, um, I guess Ben already uh, pretty much summarized what I want to talk about in the next 30 minutes. So maybe I've already done, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, I realize this is the first talk uh, after the lunch. So I hope uh, Kevin already kicked in your system. Uh, if you need a wake up call, no, I can figure out something. Uh, but anyway, this was once uh, one of my professors uh, with his, uh, expertise building uh, the chart uh, into us. But anyway, um, so today, yes, we want to talk about the uh, high throughput high through computing data centers that uh, is one of the key uh, focused uh, R&D efforts uh, we did in Huawei. But before that, uh, let me try to explain what Huawei is about. Uh, because this is a Chinese company, uh, I thought it needs a little bit of uh, introduction. Um, so, Huawei traditionally, as most of you probably already know that, uh, Huawei traditionally uh, is a telecom carrier uh, service and equipment provider. Okay? Right now, Huawei actually has three big uh, business groups. The first one is still telco and the carriers. So on a yearly basis, it's about $40 billion uh, dollar business. And uh, over the last few years, and uh, looking forward in the next five, seven years, we are also expecting about 8 to 10 percent uh, year to year growth in that business. So, this is a big chunk telco, equipment, uh, software, services, so on and so forth. The second EU, uh, second business unit or business group is consumer. 
some of you might have heard that Huawei actually is making smartphones. Right? A recent one called Mate 7. Don't ask me who came up with the name of Mate, but uh, it's a pretty good phone, okay? Uh, right now, uh, I think it's already out of stock in Europe, uh, in China, and in a few other uh, uh, places. So in terms of a consumer product, uh, particularly it's the smartphone, Huawei is already number three uh, by the shipping uh, worldwide. So telco is number one, consumer is number three, uh, particularly on smartphones. Now the smallest unit, which is uh, uh, where I'm working with right now, that's the IT enterprise unit. For well, this one, uh, uh, yearly, uh, it's only about a two, three billion dollar business. Uh, actually, for consumer, right now, it's uh, about eight billion. And for the last few years, it doubles the revenue every year. So looking forward, um, Delco <laughs> is relatively stable. It's a big chunk. Consumer is uh, pretty well established, uh, has very good growth rate. So right now, uh, the leadership of Huawei start to really focus on IT and enterprise. And one of the topic is high throughput computing data center. And that's where I come from. So I hope that gives you a, a rough idea uh, why we're doing this. And uh, I hope after this talk, you know how we are going to do it. So I have a very simple mind, uh, because at one point during the car race, actually, I was hosting the car race. Uh, but during the exploration of the route, I almost died. So luckily, you can still see me here. So I can't say I have a permanent, permanent head damage, so-called PhD, right? <laughs> but I have a very simple mind. So in this talk, basically, just try to answer three questions. The first is why. Why do you guys want to do this, right? So we will present to you some of our view on the big data and analytics challenges to motivate the, uh, the problem. Now the second question we want to ask ourselves and try to answer is the what part. What kind of problems you see and you envision in future data centers so that you really want to do something with it? Now the third one is the how part. Uh, how we want to do this? So we, we give you a name, DC 3.0, whether you like it or not, but essentially it's called high throughput computing. Uh, so that's pretty much. So if you already know the answers to these three questions, feel free to leave and grab a coffee or something. But I think we have something you need to, uh, to present. Essentially, as I'll delve into, uh, I'll show you, we're actually uh, eager, we are very eager for external collaboration, either from industry or academia, as you shall see. So stay with me. Now, from 30 feet high level and across 6,000 years, we actually have been seeing the human society is really promoted by this technology innovation, right? From, from the left to the right, you can see whether you are in agriculture society, where uh, the society is really calibrated by protein consumption, next to the industry society, where the society is really calibrated by electricity consumption. Recent, more recently, we have, we have been in this uh, information society, where internet access per capita has been categorized as uh, key features of the society. Right now, we are in this so-called post-information society, where data consumption per capita is really the problem. And, uh, in my humble opinion, the valuation, the data valuation, the realization of the data value, that's really the key point. So with that, actually big data, actually is everywhere. From the gigabyte level, to terabyte level, to petabyte level, even more. This actually presents a lot of challenges to us, particularly to the computer systems. So if we narrow it down to the data center level, here we try to characterize into five categories of challenges. I'm not going into the details, but you can see throughput, resource utilization, uh, system management, scalability, and energy efficiency. These actually have been the challenges for data centers, for clouds, you name it. But on the other hand, big data with a large volume of data, 
the all variety, different varieties of data format, and uh, still the eagerness for high throughput computing, so on and so forth, just to make these challenges even more challenging, if I may put it that way. So, looking back a little bit, if we say at the very beginning when data center first came out, that is data center DC 1.0, it's simply a pile of system resources, okay? The systems are in silo, you run them, you do some batch jobs, so on and so forth. Utilization is pretty low. Management is hard. You need a lot of manual work. After that, if we say data center 2.0, we introduce virtualization. With virtualization, security, utilization, so on and so forth, get further improved. But with the big data, more problems are coming in because of volume, the speed, so on and so forth. So what are we can we do here, right? These are the problems we see from big data and analytics. Shall we reconstruct, restructure the whole system, the cluster? even from the chip all the way to the cluster? Shall we pull the resources so that we have more fine grind resource management for higher efficiency? These are the questions we have in mind. So that actually leads us to the second question uh, we, found, we ask ourselves. What exactly are those problems if you want to do a better job with data centers? Okay. Now, <coughs> here we list a few uh, views on the future data centers. What do we think? The problems or the benefits, the problems we want to solve, or the benefits we can get if we solve those problems correctly. Well, things like it has to be big data oriented. Those notorious Vs, right? People have been really hearing so many Vs recently. But anyway, after that, this whole data center has to have the intelligent management mechanism. We also actually think it's very important even more important than intelligent man management itself is this whole service layer has to be open standard so that it enables external collaborations for better technology uh, uh, progress. Of course, things like adaptation for task uh, variation, energy efficiency, uh, and scalability. This is all important. Again, like I mentioned earlier, many of these problems, they are not new in the sense that the concepts are not new. But they become more challenging because right now we are in the year of big data. So we say we want to do a big data oriented architecture. Um, let's, let's put the uh, analogy here. If you look at the left part of the, uh, the chart, it's actually an architecture revolution from the bottom left, the so-called rotating coil for power generation, right? Once the coil becomes so large, you really do not want to move it. So the architecture moves from rotating coil to fixed coil. Now think on the right. Think of what we have been doing day to day. Uh, pathetically or not, computers and data. Now we have a big data problem. Moving data clearly is a problem. So you want to move from a CPU-centric central processing unit centric to a more data-centric architecture. This is not new, okay? But here we just want to, I mean, a lot of people have been talking about this in the last couple of years or so, maybe even longer than that. But here we just want to tell you, or at least share our view, this problem has been in the adjacent area, in power generation. And what we're doing here actually makes sense, because people have been using the same methodology to, attack, uh, to tackle different problems. If you found the bottleneck, previously coil movement, you fix it. And right now, data movement, try to fix it. So after that, like we mentioned earlier, intelligent management is very important. Here, what we want to do is we want to use <coughs> excuse me, application to drive the management. <coughs> what that means is we, based on the application characterization, we actually separate the whole data center management plane into a data plane, which actually characterizes applications, and the separate management plane, which actually does the work. We try to separate the two, hopefully, 
We haven't demonstrated yet. Hopefully, that will give us a clean uh, partition and a better efficiency in terms of cluster management. I'll show you a little bit more detail later on. Now next, like I mentioned, um, you probably, uh, if you're familiar with Huawei's business in telco, Huawei actually is very good at uh, standards. Okay, Huawei is in almost all of the standards committees. But the key point here I try to make is, we have to standardize things to make collaboration easier, to make the collaboration communication easier. So all these things coming together, we think standardization and open collaboration is very important. This may not be completely technical, but this is a very good tactic to get things going, going big. Things like adaptation to task adaptation, like uh, scalability, energy efficiency for green data centers, so on and so forth, these are not new topic, but there are still the problems there, particularly when you are talking about big data, right? So I hope I have convinced you, okay, there are 150,000 folks from Huawei, they try to do something in data center, and uh, it makes some sense to target this problem. So within that 150,000 people, uh, a few of them, including myself, we're working on this uh, PC 3.0, the high throughput computing. For that, I'll show you a little bit, a sort of an overview of what we think can be uh, some solutions to, uh, to the problem we mentioned earlier. So this is the how far. Before that though, um, because we have been talking to customers recently, and uh, even when we talk to some candidates, actually we're growing, okay? We are hiring like crazy, whether you are in Canada or somewhere else, particularly Canada, okay? If you want to go back to Canada, or if you want to go to Canada, we have a big lab over there, uh, waiting for you guys. But this is just my department, our department, okay? There are other people out there hiring like crazy. Uh, one problem with Huawei right now is you have to spend. Uh, they just too much money, they have to spend, okay? <laughs> but <clears throat> from temple, from consumer. But IT, okay? Huawei is a new, still a new coming, newcomer in the IT enterprise business. But still, I thought uh, it helps. If it tells you, actually Huawei has done some work, okay? Particularly in server and storage. So talking about data centers, let's say, okay, we do have a complete, or more or less complete protocol. Uh, if you look uh, uh, up and down from the top, you can see four sockets, eight sockets, and plus uh, servers. Two sockets right after that, Blaze, and even high density, or you call it micro server. I think the wrong is somewhere there. Uh, I hope I understand the the key concept of uh, microserver. Well, but either way, um, we we do have a sort of complete product line for servers that actually have been running in, for example, Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent uh, data centers. Each year, we sell them one billion Chinese yen, which is like 150, 160 million dollars. So all three of them, that's about half of a billion dollar business. So it's not a, we are a newcomer, but it's not a really a new business. We just want to do better. And how to do better? You should see actually from the roadmap at the very top, you can see we actually follow Intel's TikTok, TikTok strategy because we collaborate with them so deeply. At the bottom, if you see the high density category, uh, Intel's RSA rack, rack scale uh, 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 architecture, will be uh, in our product too. But after that, and also working closely with them, including other industry vendors, we'll try to see if our DC 3.0 will fly or not. And you guys will uh, will see how we fly or not, right? Um, with that, so give you a base. So these guys are not just talking. These guys have something in hand. I hope that gives you the message. Now, a little bit onto the real business. So this is sort of uh, the software, hardware architecture of the overview of the data center we're envisioning. At the bottom is a hardware pool of disaggregated resources. Not everyone likes disaggregation. 
I didn't. I wrong didn't. I heard of that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, Ron was a very good colleague from IBM Research, and uh, uh, we worked together, and I really respect him a lot. But anyway, this system, they have these aggregated resources. So CPUs, memories, storages, you name it. Okay? But they are connected by a unified interconnect. Why do we do that? Because we thought we have done some switches for telco before. And we have optical, everything really good place. We have done pretty good job for telco with enterprise grade, reliability, high performance, so on and so forth. So maybe there's something we can do. On the other hand, uh, this disaggregation uh, project actually was not the first, uh, uh, at least from academia viewpoint, was actually envisioned by the HP lab folks, those uh, distinguished researchers over there. So we thought there may be a synergy between this new concept and what we have in terms of network technology. So putting them together. That's the origin, okay? But whether it works or not, we'll see. It might work, it might not, if not, we'll fix it. Now, going up, uh, the software layer, like I mentioned, we want to have a clean separation between data and the management. So, so that hopefully we can have a better or efficient management plan. Not going into details, but very importantly, sorry, I almost forgot that. Like I mentioned, we not only collaborate with industry vendors, partners, we also collaborate with academia. Um, a little bit to my surprise, actually. Uh, at one point, I, I just joined Huawei about four months ago. Okay, there was a. a, a the best computer architecture conference called the International Symposium on Computer Architecture. It's got in June in Minneapolis. When I went there, I told many of them, because I've been there, I know a lot of folks there, uh, the first thing I told them is, uh, okay, I, I, I changed my job. I am now working with a Chinese company called Huawei. They said, yeah, Huawei, I've been doing consulting jobs with them already. A lot of them have been answering my questions like that. So Huawei has been really aggressive in terms of collaborating with academia as well. Here I only could give you one example, which is the Institute of Computing Technology, ICT, of Chinese Academies of Sciences, uh, of CAS. And uh, there's a lot of ongoing work with them, and together with many other universities and the research institutes in Europe, in America, you name, it, you name it. So this is a huge collaboration effort, and uh, we are not alone. Otherwise. I know we won't make it. <laughs> All right, we still need help. So uh, actually, over the uh, last uh, la uh, yesterday's program and this morning's program, I see that a lot of we have been talking to uh, some of you guys. So there are a lot of synergy. So we'll see how that goes. Try to uh, make a. I think Huawei has a, this logo called interconnected world for a better future, something like that. Okay. So we'll see because we are already connected. Let's try to make a better, better future. So a little bit down to the hardware here. This is crazy, okay, let me tell you. This is crazy. You have different types of resources uh, on the right, on, on the screen. You see the green one, I believe that's the green color. I think I'm not colorblind. That's the CPU pool, okay? Well, not everyone really likes the CPU only pool. We didn't like it too much either. So we actually also have a local memory in there, okay? Limited amount. But we do have DRAMs there, all right? They are not always remote. And then there's a memory pool in the middle. That's the uh, orange, yellowish. Over there, we may try DRAM, uh, NVM there too. Depends on the uh, maturity uh, of, uh, of the technology. And at the bottom, at the bottom that's the IO pool for storage or network IO. And we try to use this unified network, connect all these guys. It's crazy, right? And uh, in between, we have these so-called cloud controllers. You might see that uh, uh, dark blue boxes. Uh, we, uh, that's the cloud controller. In each of the pool, each of the board in the pools, uh, we have this uh, cloud uh, controller to hook them up together. And the protocol are called PRAP. Um, so that's pretty much the very high level architecture uh, can we do this uh, a little bit later? Thank you. Um, so, these are some of the key features uh, we think the 
HTC uh, DC can offer. First is application-driven management for disaggregated resources. Okay, let me try to answer it to myself. Why you guys do disaggregated resources? I guess my question to that is, do you have a bad idea? You just want to follow? Uh, do something new, okay? Don't argue with me because I don't have a better answer for you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, the PRAP, that's one very key thing we are working on right now, okay? Uh, perhaps I already know some of the problem, uh, questions you want to ask me, and I have some questions myself too, so don't worry, let's talk about this. Of course, many core processor, that's the key part, it's already there, so see if we can do a more efficient one. In the end, already on horizon, some uh, <coughs> vendors already uh, have those. We may have some capacity problems, but it's a new thing, right? Why not embrace it and try to improve it? Don't just say, okay, it's crap, don't do it, right? Like the disaggregation, it's crap, don't do it, no. Try to be a little bit more motivated, right? Life goes on, right? Now, optical interconnect, yes, we have very strong technology in optical interconnect. One of our key uh, leaders, I believe he, uh, He's not sleeping right now, but he is sitting <laughs> over there. Uh, I think he's sleeping because uh, he has been uh, listening to my uh, lengthy words for too long. But anyway, um, but essentially, this is data center. These things will work. It's not just hardware. So we have put a lot of efforts in this data center level efficient programming framework. So let, let me go through all of this a uh, little bit in more detail. <coughs> This is just a graphic view to tell you the application-driven management for these disaggregate, uh, disaggregate resources. Okay? Once the application comes in, we have this resource management center. Underneath, it, remember we have these cloud controllers, try to collect them. Yeah? And from, just from the colors, you can see um, that patients may use resources across the node in a unified fashion. Uh, what Kira does, okay, this pooled resource access protocol, uh, it has to feature lossless uh, transmission, address-based routing, and some simplified data packet mock uh, format to make it more efficient. In the time, let's not uh, go into too much detail. Of course, many more processors. We actually have been collaborating with, uh, with others on this as well. So if you start from the left, each die, we feature uh, heterogeneous core composition. Uh, each time may be a 3D layer, uh, 3D integrated. And we have multiple dyes uh, putting into this multi-chip module level, like a, more like a 2.5D integration, which comes to a so-called DPU, data processing unit, just a name. Uh, whether it works or not, I mean, the name works or not, uh, I don't care, it's just a name. But it's a 2.5D integration of 3D dyes, okay? Now we're in the middle. Now, going next is easier. You put them on the board and put the boards in the rack. Now, let me clearly, clearly, that's a very good technology. Don't want to waste too much time here. Optical. Uh, here we focus on interchip uh, communication for, for opticals, uh, based on the latency uh, limitation of optical for ARM chip. Uh, like I mentioned, the fr uh, programming framework is very important. The one key aspect of our programming framework is we target each level of users. What does that mean? Okay, from the bottom, on the left, you can see it's the infrastructure. There will be someone working on it. But if you go to the top a little bit, first, we target the parallel computing experts. And second, a level up, target domain experts. And eventually, we target the end users, like business analysts. So this framework actually is built for users. And uh, I apologize for the uh, small fonts on the right, but uh, these are, I can, what I can guarantee you is uh, there's a lot of work going on this. With that, I hope uh, at least I give you uh, an overview of what we're trying to do to build a new green and intelligent uh, data center 3.0 for this uh, big data here. It features a few uh, um, uh, new things or old things in the new plan. Uh, either way, I hope uh, uh, this, uh, this can be a good overview of what we try to do. And we do open for collaboration, whether from industry or academia. Thank you, guys.
If there's no question, I guess uh, I'm off. Okay, so the question was, so what kind of collaborations we are looking for in terms of uh, locations of those research institutes and, and the universities? Um, probably a couple, uh, one month ago, you probably heard that our big boss, Mr. Ren, he went to France, uh, went to Europe. He said, I give you $1.5 billion. Uh, we set up a research center there. So Europe, we have already have a big, uh, big, uh, big R&D investment in Europe. But in Toronto, like I mentioned, we're, we're building a big lab there, software, cloud, okay, infrastructure lab. In U.S., actually, we, uh, we have been working with quite a few universities. Just name it, from the top. <laughs> Many of them. So there's no restriction on our side. If there's a restriction, that should be on the other side, not on our side. Thank you.